Okay, so we're going to take a look at multi-sim and kind of we're kind of starting off fresh with multi-sim. So um, we're really going to only be looking at a couple of controls here. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the file new. Okay, so if we're just doing a, a normal circuit design, we do a new design. Uh, if you have a programmable, programmable logic chip, you do a PLD design. So if, you, if the destination for your design is a breadboard or you know a, a regular circuit, um, you do design. If not, it's if it's going to pro, if you're going to download it onto a chip, it's a PLD design. Okay. So in our case, design is kind of the default, so it's already been selected. So what we're looking at here is a design right here in this area. Okay. All right. So. So there are some shortcut buttons up here. Uh, so let's just to kind of take a look at the screen. You have kind of your basic file menu type stuff right here in this area. You got you got your extensive file menus up here. You have kind of your shortcut buttons right here. So for example, if I want to put a source, uh, it kind of opens up into select component. Okay, so essentially these shortcut buttons, if I put place an indicator, it will open up into the place dialog for place a component and then kind of already do a search for me. Okay, so we're not going to use these shortcut buttons initially, but they are there once you start to work more quickly. Okay, along the side here, these are really useful. For example, this uh, measurement probe is really useful. Uh, lab view instruments is useful. Okay, the probe is, is really super useful. Um, we don't need to use it yet though. You'll use that kind of down the line. Okay, so for today's stuff, for like in the initial introduction here, we're mainly just going to use place component. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go place. We're going to click on component. And kind of the first thing that every, uh, every circuit starts with is going to be a power source. Okay, so how we find that is if we go to, to uh, you leave it on master database, you go to group, you can either do all groups. If you know what you're looking for, you can search up here. Okay, so we could search on power, right? Um, in general, though, like for uh, digital, it's going to be VCC. Okay. Um, however, uh, let's go ahead and just kind of find it in the group. So if we go to groups and we go to sources, um, and we go ahead and we go down to uh, power sources, Okay, notice that we have a DC power right there. Okay, so in general, when we first start out here, we're going to be using a v, uh, DC power. A little later on, we'll use the VCC. Okay, and you notice they're just some different types of power supplies, right? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add our DC power. All right, right there. Uh, notice that the place component pops right back up because they're kind of assuming that you need to place more than one component. All right, so indeed we do. We need to go ahead and place a ground. So I'm going to click on ground. I'm going to click OK. OK, and then we're going to continue to place components. We're going to need a resistor. OK, so let's. Uh, we're going to go back to sources. Um, notice that we can go down. Uh, we can go down to uh, basically go to basic for now. OK, so click on basic. Inside basics, you're going to have resistor. And notice when nothing comes up, you might be you might have already put some text into this search box. Okay, so notice that a lot of different resistors come up. Okay, so let's say that we want, let's say we have something, let's say for example, we have 220 ohms. All right, so um, notice that's 220 mega ohms, 220 ohms, 220 kilo ohms. All right, so let's say we got 200, 220 ohms. We click. Okay, and let's say that then we also have a 470 ohm resistor. All right, so we go ahead and click there and click OK. So we got our 470 ohm resistor. Now I know for a fact that I want to go ahead and measure the volts and the volts and amps running through the circuit. So I'm going to want to be able to measure the current and voltage in the circuit. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to need to do there is I'm going to need to go to indicators. Okay, not inductor, whoops, not inductor. Okay, so I need to go back up to the groups and I'm gonna click on indicators. Okay, I'm gonna go to voltmeter. And notice on the voltmeter, you can get different ones based upon what side is positive and negative. 
The one that comes up already is going to be fine for us. Okay, we're going to click OK, and that's going to give us a voltmeter. I can, uh, and we're also going to need an amp meter, an amp meter. Okay, so we're going to click OK, and we'll kind of talk a little bit about what the differences are here. Okay, and I'm going to go and click, and click OK. All right, um, so we have kind of our, our components here. Uh, let's take a look at what's on the screen. So we have our, um, we have our voltmeter. Uh, and what you'll notice here, if I go ahead and, um, and double click on it, so let's say I want to double click on it, I can, uh, change the, uh, I can change the resistance, I can change the label. So say I want to make this a uh, V1 or VR1. Okay, so let's say I have a problem where I have to, uh, to find that out. I can change the, the uh, label on it. Okay, and I can also change some of the values, like the display. Um, I can change the number of pins. You can change a lot of different stuff. And generally, it's just going to be the label for now. I can also click on it, right click. I can click copy, which is the same everywhere. Or I can click, I can click on the whole thing there. Notice I get the blue dotted bounding box. I can click Control C. I can click off of it and click Control V, and then click to place. Okay, so they act kind of like objects in any other program. All right, so let's go ahead and wire up our, our circuit. Okay, so how you're going to do this is, notice that on this power source, do you see how there's a bar? Um, there's a, a long bar here and a small bar at the bottom. Okay, so that means that it's the negative side is the small bar, the positive side is the, is the, um, is the long bar. Okay, all right, so our ammeter is going to... Uh, our, which is going to measure our uh, current is uh, it needs to be put in line with the circuit. Okay, that means you can't just connect the two sides out to an existing wire. It has to be connected in the main line of the circuit, right? So we're going to click from one connection point that's on one edge of our power source. We're just going to connect the pin to that to the pin. Okay, and that red line is essentially our virtual wire, right? Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to our resistor. So I click once on one pin, once to the other. Okay, I'm going to move my first voltmeter kind of up above it. Oh, actually, this is a good time to show it. You can also move multiple stuff. So if you click up here, click, drag, un, you know, let go, you can select many objects and drag them all as one. Uh, so I can drag this over. You can also do things like grouping objects, stuff like that, which we won't go into right now. The other thing that you can do is you can, um, you can rotate an object. So if we right click on here and rotate 90 degrees clockwise, notice that I can rotate any object and that makes it easier when you're, when you're wiring things up, okay? Um, and I can kind of show you why you would do that. So let's say that I put a, a wire here and then I need to go ahead and wire my next resistor down to the other side of this power source. Notice that that wiring can get kind of messy, right? So what I might want to do is I might want to click on the resistor, right click, click 90 degrees clockwise, and all of a sudden it really cleans up my wiring, right? Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to drag the ground down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move this, move the wire over. So by clicking on here, Notice how if I if I get this uh, the double arrows I can move a wire over, and then I can also click on that ground and just connect the ground in to a point. And notice that that went ahead and that now the the ground is now connected into my circuit. All right. Okay. So I've got my resistors. I've got my my amp meter. Right. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and click my and connect my voltmeters down to my wire. Okay, so as you might imagine, that voltmeter is now going to measure the voltage drop over the resistor, right, through the resistor. All right, so notice that unlike an amp meter where it had to be in line, the voltage meter can be just connected on either side. Um, it still has a positive and negative side. It's very difficult for you guys to see it right now, but, um, but you can see that there's a, there's a voltmeter there, okay? Okay, I'm just kind of looking over on the right hand side. Um, you can also, there, there are some different, um, there are some different um, 
uh, uh, sorry, there's some different, whoops, there are some different um, uh, measurement tools you can use over here. We're not going to use them currently. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do 90 degree clockwise. We're going to go ahead and wire the our second voltmeter in. Okay. So now this, So now in theory, what's going to happen is, is that uh, when I click run, the power is going to turn on, and the the, uh, the circuit's going to run as it was intended. Notice that your wires can get kind of messy, by the way. Okay, probably should have just left that where it was. All right. Okay, so in order to run the circuit, basically you're, you're essentially turning on power in the circuit. We're going to go ahead and click this green button to run. Okay, it runs for a second. Okay, so, uh, and it should make sense to you at this point, right? So we have our, our current is 0 0.017. Okay, our volt is 3.826 and 8.174. The two voltage drops, if you added those up, are going to equal to 12 volts, as you might expect. Okay, if you did Ohm's law to get the current, you would get the current that's displaying there. Okay. Okay. Notice that a lot of my controls are grayed out once it's running. All right. So we can go ahead and click stop. Let's take a look at this amp meter again. Okay. So this is going to be displaying in amps. Okay, so obviously this is in milliamps, right, if you were to convert it. Um, but it's going to display an amp. So just be aware of those decimal conversions you might even need to use. Okay, so that is the basics of multi-SIM um, for this, for our kind of first foray into basic, you know, circuits. Um, so uh, good luck.